come back. In Africa, a new lifestyle awaits where you can enjoy the culture and the local population who are keen to show you the wonders of the motherland. Welcome to BlackExcellence.com, the site where we share black excellence, opulence, and affluence. Our mission is to inspire you as we enlighten you. Africa is a big destination for expatriates from around the globe. It is the second largest continent and also has the second largest population with over 1.2 billion people. The continent of Africa has 54 independent countries and each one hosts a large diversity of ethnicities, cultural traditions, natural beauty and a mosaic of languages. Despite the political uncertainties, health challenges and safety concerns, Africa is an increasingly attractive destination for African Americans seeking to return home or for experts seeking higher salaries overseas because of the demand for skilled workers. If you're considering moving abroad, we implore you to perform your own extensive research and take advantage of the vast amount of information and testimonials that are available on the internet. And maybe this video is the first step in performing your own due diligence. Because to move abroad anywhere means that you will have to start over, sort out living arrangements and adjust to a new environment. Nevertheless, most experts who have relocated to Africa will attest that their triumphs in the motherland overwhelmingly overshadow the trials. Without further ado, let's get started. South Africa, the southernmost country on the African continent renowned for its varied topography, great natural beauty, and cultural diversity, all of which have made the country a favored destination for expatriates since the legal ending of apartheid in 1994. South Africa is often referred to as the Rainbow Nation because of its cultural and racial diversity. Black South Africans are generally warm, patient, creative, and charismatic. They share an adventurous, entrepreneurial streak that sees them opportunistic and open to take risks. Over 70% of South Africans identify themselves as Black African, descending from the tribal cultures from all over African continent. South Africa has a rich cultural legacy with the tribal traditions mixing with the more westernized population. South Africa's many nationalities and cultures are reflected in its cuisines, which has African, Asian, and European influences. The great mixture of cultures make for a wide variety of food choices in the country. From the traditional food of various cultures, to the cosmopolitan cuisine that is available in many large cities throughout the world. This melting pot of cultures has created a fascinating range of languages, religion, music, and art in one country. Traditional art forms such as dancing and textile weaving are used as vehicles of ethnic identity and are carefully preserved while modern art forms, from painting to literature, have flourished in the years since the end of apartheid. Many popular South African arts represent a future of cultural influences such as township jazz and pop music, religious choral music, and so-called traditional dances. South Africa is one of the most geographically varied countries on the continent with a coastline that stretches 1,600 miles, vast desert plains and mountainous terrains. Its coastlines borders the Indian Oceans to the southeast and the Atlantic Ocean to the southwest. South Africa enjoys a relatively stable mist economy that draws on its fertile agricultural lands, abundant mineral resources, tourist attractions, and highly evolved intellectual capital. The economy of South Africa received a surge when diamonds and gold were discovered there. However, economic prosperity for majority of South Africans would not become available until apartheid was abolished. 
in spite of greater political equality and economic stability for all citizens, South Africa still faces steep socio-economic challenges in post-apartheid existence. However, the post-apartheid civil landscape of South Africa has seen the black population urbanize and educated faster than other countries. The number of black South Africans in the middle class and occupying positions in the society and government is increasing exponentially. The country's social turbulence fuels an ambition to be economically independent, self-sustainable and competent in order to escape the crippling condition of unemployment. South Africa is a large country with a climate that varies from region to region. The Western Cape has a Mediterranean-type climate, whilst the interior of the country has a semi-desert climate that is typified by cold, dry winters, and summer rainfall. There is a two-tier healthcare system in South Africa, with a large subsidized public sector and a small but high-quality private sector, with significant funding and the best specialist going to the private sector, there is a major gap between the public and private healthcare facilities in much of the country. Therefore, it is highly advisable for experts to take out a private insurance policy to receive the best healthcare available. Ghana is a popular expert destination in West Africa, offering a blend of history, tradition and modernity all at once. Ghana offers a pleasant way of life in a dynamic environment, evolving at a fast pace and preserving its cultural diversity. Gold, cocoa and more recently oil form the cornerstone of Ghana's economy and have helped fuel its economic boom. Formerly known as the Gold Coast, Ghana is a West African country on the Gulf of Guinea. Most of the population is concentrated along the coast in the south, as well as regions to the northeast of the coast. As large parts of the rural population are drawn towards Ghana metro areas, most notably the country's capital Accra and the Kumasi area, the countryside is rather sparsely populated. New experts moving to Ghana will notice how friendly people are along with its laid-back culture. Many experts are drawn to Ghana in a desire to give back through volunteering and making a difference in Africa. While a number of newcomers are flooding into the country to work as a result of the growing hydrocarbon, telecommunication, mining, transport industries and other attractive jobs in the service sector, there is a wealth of cultural festivities to discover and music and dance almost always are central parts of the celebrations. The cultural heritage of the nation is also a considerable draw for experts living in Ghana who want to take the opportunity to partake in these unique and fascinating festivals. There are few modern hotels and beaches facilities in Ghana for experts to enjoy, but there is a growing list of continental restaurants and nightlife venues popping up in the main cities. The foreign community only constitutes a small proportion of the total population, but the expert community has grown over the years and is quite diverse. Safety in Ghana isn't a huge concern as the country generally suffers less from crime, corruption and political instability than its neighbors and other sub-Saharan countries. Experts moving to Ghana will encounter a relative world of different ecosystems and climatic subregions. Characteristic of tropical countries, the only seasonal change residents experience is the switch between the rainy seasons and the dry seasons. The nation's capital, Accra, is a city of roughly 2.5 million, making it by far the largest urban area in Ghana and one of the largest on the entire African continent. Ghana is one of the most advanced countries in Africa in terms of healthcare, thanks to the launch of the public insurance system that replaced the existing cash and carry health system in 2003. The Gambia is the smallest country on the mainland continent of Africa, but its captivating array of natural beauty and wildlife really bellies its small size. The stunning backdrop of swain palms and scenic lagoons makes the Gambia an attractive country for visitors. 
travelers, and experts to experience. As a cosmopolitan nation and one of the most densely populated country in West Africa, expatriates can easily mingle with the warm local population and rapidly adapt to their host country. The Gambia, known for being warm, friendly, and safe, earning the country the reputation for being the smiling coast, adding to its rich culture and vibrant heritage. It is home to Jufure, the reputed ancestral village of Kunta Kinte, the main character in Alex Ali's well-known novel, Roots. The Gambia is flat and is dominated by the river, which is navigable throughout the length of the country. The peculiar shape and size of the country are the result of its territorial compromises made during the 19th century by Great Britain. The Gambia's economy is dominated by agriculture. About two-thirds of the population is engaged in raising livestock or grain crops. Small-scale manufacturing includes processing peanuts, fish, and hides. The most promising sector for expert professionals looking for job opportunities are industries and services. The highest concentration of people is around the increasingly urbanized landscape as well as its capital city of Banjul. Urban dwellers retain close ties to their rural relatives and there is considerable interaction between rural and urban population. The Gambia has long been home to several different ethnic groups who have maintained their individual cultural traditions. Gambia cuisines is nearly identical to Senegalese cooking. Dance and music, traditionally tied to village activities, are still important to Gambians today. The musical performances of traditional West African troubadour historians, known as griots, not only provide entertainment, but also serve to preserve cultural traditions, oral gynecologies, and historical narratives. Gambias are also enthusiastic soccer fans, and virtually every town and villages there has a field or an open space for playing the sports. The country lies within the Sudanian climate region, giving it a tropical climate. Uninterrupted hot, humid weather predominates the months of November through May. The rest of the year, or its green season, enjoys rain from June towards the end of October. The healthcare system in Gambia is built around three levels with four referral hospitals that are operated by the government. There are a small number of health centers with over 200 mobile clinics. The Gambia hosts a number of privately run clinics which are recommended to experts who should have an international medical plan with an emergency evacuation package. Gabon is one of the least add off countries in western part of Africa, but it has one of the highest urbanization rates in the world. More than four fifths of Gabon's population is urban, with about half the people living in its capital and largest city, Libreville. It also boasts of being an upper middle income country, since it is the fifth largest oil producing country in Africa. In the past decade, it has risen and attained strong economic stability because of its consistent production of oil and manganese. Unlike many other African nations in the vicinity, Gabon enjoys a relatively stable political system as well as prosperous economy. Gabon is unusual in the sense that it is a relatively peaceful nation and yet within its population exists over 40 different ethnic groups. The relative safety of the nation is a plus for any expatriate thinking of living in Gabon. The capital, Libreville, has a well-established restaurant and shopping culture with a wide variety of food styles. Gabonese food is influenced by the French and the fact that Libreville is situated on the beach. Eating white fish is a delicacy for the locals. The city has an active nightlife and weekends are centered around the beach. 
Gabon is a country lying on the west coast of Africa, astride the equator. Gabon is generally divided into three different geographical regions. In addition to the coastal plain, there are mountains as well as the savanna in the east of the country. Around 10% of Gabon is protected by national parkland and over 70% of Gabon is tropical rainforest with a plateau region in the south. Gabon's economy has more links with the European and American markets than with those in the neighboring countries. The economic shares some characteristics with those of other sub-Saharan African states with a large degree of foreign investment and control for the decline of agriculture. Oil accounts for a major source of the country's riches. Oil production accounts for 80% of the country's exports, 60% of fiscal revenue, and 45% of GDP. Gabon is also a hub of business tourism, offering visitors new encounters and an amazing culture. Gabon has an equatorial climate with year-round high temperatures and humidity. Rainfall varies, with almost all of it falling between October and May. In the period from June to September, there is little or no rainfall, but humidity remains high. The health services in Gabon are mainly given by public institutions, though there are also private institutions that provide healthcare services. However, since government provided medical attention can be inadequate, it is recommended that experts take out private healthcare insurance. Nigeria is the most populous black nation on the planet. Nigerians are known for their vibrant and friendly energy, expressed through diverse creative expressions. They are known to be intelligent, hardworking people, and they can do a never say never attitude, which is complemented with a friendly and accommodating spirit. Experts will certainly enjoy the culture and the flavor of Nigeria from its rich heritage to its spectacular nature, from captivating destinations to its welcoming spirits. Home to over 200 million inhabitants, Nigeria has one of the largest population of youths in the world. There are an estimated 250 ethnic groups in Nigeria, each inhabit a territory that is considered to be its own by rights of first occupancy and inheritance. Nigeria's film industry, Nollywood, is the second largest film industry on the globe. The country also continues to maintain pioneering status with its music, which have played major roles in shaping African music scene, as well as influence on contemporary world music, not to mention the art bit of Africa can also be considered the fashion, technological, and creative orb in Africa. Marked geography differences exist between north and south in physical landscape and vegetation. These differences form the basis of the division of Nigeria into three geographic regions. The south is the most economically developed part of Nigeria where its forest resources and tree crops are extensively exploited. The central region is the most sparsely settled and least developed part of Nigeria. The north or Nigerian Sudan experienced a new economic pattern when the construction of railroad connected the region to the country's coastal ports. The Nigerian economy is one of the largest in Africa. It is marked by middle income, mixed economy, and emerging markets, with expanding manufacturing, financial, service, communication, technology, and entertainment sectors. Nigeria's economy is ranked as the 26th largest economy in the world and the 24th largest in terms of purchasing power. By 2050, it is projected to be among the top 10 economies in the world. Nigeria has a tropical climate with variable rainy and dry seasons depending on location. 
It is hot and wet most of the year in the southeast, but dry in the southwest and farther inland. A savanna climate with marked wet and dry season prevails in the north and west, while a steep climate with a little precipitation is found in the far north. Temperature and humidity remain relatively constant throughout the year in the south, while the seasons vary considerably in the north. Quality healthcare via Nigeria's universal healthcare system faces significant challenges due to its lack of resources, insufficient number of trained medical professionals, and growing population. However, adequate coverage through an international private health insurance plan is the recommendation for experts. If you're looking for a destination that combines both adventure and good opportunities, Senegal should definitely be considered. Living in this West African country offers comparatively good facilities and an amazing natural beauty. Located at the westernmost point of the continent and served by multiple air and maritime travel routes, Senegal is known as the gateway to Africa. The country lies at an ecological boundary where semi-arid grassland, oceanfront, and tropical rainforest converge. This diverse environment has endowed Senegal with a wide variety of plant and animal life, long considered one of Africa model democracies. The Western African nation of Senegal has a tradition of stable governments and a civilian rule. Compared with other West African countries, Senegal has an extensive and highly developed road system, with motorways and paved roads reaching all of the urban areas and many of the rural regions. The Senegalese people are renowned for their legendary friendliness and hospitality. Experts tend to be pleasantly shocked about how welcoming they are to foreigners. It's one of the key tenets of Senegalese culture. Additionally, Senegal is known for its music, art, food, films, and literature. Like many West African countries, Senegal is home to a wide variety of ethnic groups and minorities, each with their own particular language and dialect. The large number of tribes contribute to Senegal's host of varying traditions and festivals that take place across the country, whether you are in a major city or a rural village. Expatriates that want to move to Senegal from colder climates will be pleased to hear the country's tropical weather means it is hot all year round. The rainy season lasts from May to November and the dry season spans from December through April. Dakar is not just Senegal's capital city. It is the country's economic, cultural and sporting hub. Situated on the Cap Vert Peninsula, it is almost entirely surrounded by the Atlantic Ocean, which offers up a number of water sports, fishing opportunities and beaches, while Dakar also hosts a wide range of stadiums and sports clubs. In addition, there is endless number of museums, art galleries and theatres for you to indulge in culturally. Dakar is the West African capital of arts and culture. Every two years, it hosts the Dakar Biennale, the largest contemporary art show in Africa, which takes place in venues across the city. Healthcare in Senegal is of good standard, particularly in the Dakar and other developed urban areas. Senegal has both a public and private healthcare system available to experts working and living in the country. Famous for endless savanna sunsets and a wilderness filled with majestic wildebeest, snow-misted mountains and traditional tribe cultures, Magical Kenya is a romantic and intriguing country that has been attracting Westerners for decades. Founded on traditional tribal cultures, Kenya is a rich and vibrant country with an emphasis on the natural environment, but the modern world is ever more present. Foodies living in Kenya can look forward to a range of culinary delights. Bordered by the Indian Ocean, Kenya is an East African country enjoying a diverse climate varying from one region to another. It has already attracted many foreign professionals over the years due to its developed tertiary sector. Nicknamed the Cradle of Humanity, Kenya has been inhabited by humans for millions of years. Throughout its later history, its rich agricultural lands and strategic location in East Africa attracted the interest of foreign powers. Most experts moving to Kenya settle in a major city, especially in Nairobi or Mombasa. 
Both are important urban centers with significant local economies, large populations, and stark income inequality. Experts in Kenya have the advantage of being able to explore some of the most magnificent landscapes in the world, including beautiful white sand beaches, lush forests, and parks bursting with wildlife, whilst living a low-cost lifestyle and enjoying Kenya's melting pot of diverse cultures. In the cities, the expert social scene is buzzing, and there is increasingly greater social interaction with the locals too as English is widely spoken. Many experts living in Kenya take some time out of their everyday routine to immerse themselves in the country's natural beauty. Admiring impalas and zebras near Lake Victoria, relaxing on the tropical beaches of Kenya's south coast, and hiking in the forests around rugged Mount Kenya may all become some of your most wonderful memories of living in Kenya. There are several cultural institutes that generally excellent locales for experts who are interested in the contemporary art scene, be it music, the fine arts, or literature. Kenya's economy greatly relies on trade, transports, communication, and teaching, which are promising fields for expatriates in terms of employment. Being so vast, with such diverse topography, the climate in Kenya varies depending on the location. Coastal areas and the city of Mombasa are humid, with high temperatures almost all year round, whilst to the north, the climate is arid with very little rainfall, and average temperatures range anywhere between 70 degrees to 105 degrees. Kenya has a public health care system which provides primary care, pharmaceuticals, and emergency services. Experts are strongly advised to purchase comprehensive private health care in order to gain access to more competent, well-trained doctors and nurses, as well as more modern facilities. Tanzania is a culturally eclectic and largely homogeneous society that is extremely rich in age-old cultures and traditions. It has been described as one of the most diverse countries in Africa. It is a country whose culture is infused with African, Arab, European, and Indian influences due to its prominent role in the spice trade. The local population is well known for being friendly and polite to visitors, and there is a strong sense of national pride that reverberates throughout the country. Tanzania's population includes more than 120 different indigenous African people, most of whom are today clustered into larger groupings. Tanzania is an East African country with diverse landscape and rich cultural traditions located just south of the equator. It is home to the continent's highest mountain, Kilimanjaro, and the world's second deepest lake, Lake Tanganyika. It also includes the Zanzibar Archipelago, several islands, sometimes called the Spice Islands, in the Indian Ocean, 15 miles off the coast of Tanzania. It is a very popular tourist destination with its breathtaking beaches and clear turquoise blue water. Tanzania's stable economy can provide interesting job opportunities to foreign professionals looking for work. It is a developing country and its economy depends heavily on agriculture, accounting for more than 40% of its GDP. Apart from the agricultural sector, tourism, mining and small-scale industries are increasingly contributing to the national economic growth. Mainland Tanzania can be divided into four principal climatic and topographic areas. The hot and humid coastal lowland of the Indian Ocean shoreline. The hot and the arid zone of the broad center plateau. The high inland mountain and lake region of the northern border where Mount Kilimanjaro is situated. And the islands of the northeast and southwest, the climates of which range from tropical to temperate. Precipitation is heavier on the coasts, where there are two peaks of precipitations from October to November and April to May. 
Tanzania has a quality of medical care in the country that is generally low. Experts are strongly advised to purchase a comprehensive private international health insurance plan or make arrangements with a private doctor, which can get quite expensive. Beautiful beaches, blue lagoons, ideal temperature is the dream setting of this beautiful country of Seychelles. Experts looking for job opportunities can find leads in the tourism sectors. It is one of the richest countries in Africa with the highest GDP per capita. Seychelles culture has been shaped by a combination of European, African and Asian influences. African influences is revealed in the local music and dance as well as in Seosewa. Like its neighbor, Mauritius, the Seychelles is often cited as an example of racial and religious harmony and compared with most countries it is. Thanks to the island, close link with Europe, the contemporary feels of Seychelles is surprisingly modern. The main island of Mahé can be a rather sophisticated place, characterized as much by western style clothing, brand new cars, mobile phones, and modern houses as by any overt sign of traditional Creole culture. But beneath this strongly westernized veneer, many aspects of traditional Creole culture survive. The live on in dance, music, hospitality, Asian beliefs, the language, the carefree attitude, and in many other day-to-day -day ways of doing things. Dance plays an important role in Seychelles society. The sensual dance blends traditional African customs, religion, and social relations, key elements central to African life. The complicated and combining dance movements were traditionally carried out under moonlight to the beats of African drums. Its citizens enjoy participating in and watching several team sports. The National Stadium, located in the capital city of Victoria, offers a year-round program of events. Sichel, Highland Republic in the Western Indian Ocean, comprising about 115 islands in the Indian Ocean, northeast of Madagascar, with lush tropical vegetation, beautiful beaches, and a wide variety of marine life. It is one of the world's smallest countries, composed of two main island groups. Tourism is the predominant industry in Seychelles, as well as agriculture and fishing. Seychelles has a missed developing economy that is heavily dependent upon the service sector in general and the tourism industry in particular. Despite continued visible trade deficits, the country has experienced steady growth. The climate is tropical oceanic, with little temperature variation during the year. Daily temperature rises to the mid-80s in the afternoon and falls to the low 70s at night. Precipitation levels vary greatly from island to island, but humidity is persistently high. The Seychelles government provides free access to primary health care for all its citizens and has adequate service in child and maternity health care, access to education and health safe drinking water and sanitation is considered to be adequate within the country. The Cape Verde Islands are a place of great contrast, with each of the 10 islands offering a different experience. Cape Verde varies widely in character and scenery through its islands and five tiny islets. From spectacular verdant mountain ranges to deserted beaches with a few volcanic landscapes, thrown in for good measure. It's the variety that makes Cape Verde such an unusual and appealing destination. You will notice the blend of Portuguese and African influences in the buildings, curious musical styles, and particularly noticeable in the food. 
music is a key component of life, and several of the islands host exuberant carnivals. Cape Verde is in the Atlantic Ocean, off the coast of Western Africa. Cabo Verde is named for the westernmost cape of Africa. Cape Verde, which is located in nearby Senegal and its nearest point on the continent. Expatriates settling here can enjoy a pleasant way of life in a warm climate and fantastic beaches. Praia, the capital, offers good housing options and some job opportunities. It also hosts a small English-speaking community, the main language spoken here being Portuguese and Creole. Cape Verde continues to exhibit one of Africa's most stable democratic governments. After independence, the government played a central role in Cabo Verde's economy, and dramatic changes to the Cabo Verdean economy structure have since guided the country toward a market economy. As a result of these reforms, the number of utility companies, bank, tourism sector entities, and other enterprises have started to flourish. Additionally, the government is continuing to invest in modernized infrastructure, providing economic support for these new companies. Generally moderate, the climate is characterized by stable temperature with extreme aridity. The islands are profoundly affected by two season nature of the intertropical convergence zone, a belt of convergent trade winds and rising air that encircles the earth near the equator. Medical facilities in Cape Verde are limited and some medicines are in short supply or unavailable. The cost of treatment at a private clinic is slightly less than what you did expect, but it's highly recommended to invest in health insurance. Zambia is commonly regarded as one of the most beautiful, friendly, diverse and unspoiled country on the entire African continent. Situated in the southern part of Africa, it is an intriguing country that offers scenery full of natural wonders. Zambia's contemporary culture is a blend of values, norms, material and spiritual traditions of more than 70 ethnically diverse people. Expatriates are drawn to this country due to its culture, traditions, folklore and plethora of colorful festivals. Today, Zambia is one of Africa's most urbanized countries due to influence from Western culture. But the people of Zambia still preserve their tradition and celebrate over 20 ceremonies and cultural festivals each year in the different parts of the country. Aside from the majestic Victoria Falls, Zambia has more natural water resources than any other South African country, including a myriad of other falls dotted across the country, not to mention the famous Zambezi River. The many national parks offers great opportunities for observing Africa's plains game and attendant predators, while bustling urban areas offers a taste of eclectic Zambian culture. The country has countless ages of undisturbed erosion. The country has countless ages of undisturbed erosion of the underlying crystalline rocks. The rocks contain the bulk of the country's wealth in form of minerals and the 19-mile-long corridor known as the Copper Belt along the northwestern part of the country is the mainstay of the Zambia economy. Zambia is a developing country and has achieved middle-income status in 2011. Through the first decade of the 21st century, the economy of Zambia was one of the fastest-growing economies in Africa and its capital. Lusaka is one of the fastest growing cities in Southern Africa. Zambian culture 
remain prominent and long-standing tribal customs include rituals and ceremonies to mark rites of passage such as coming of age, marriages or changing seasons celebrations. Zambia's music, characterized by a lot of singing and dancing, is a mixture of tradition, African and Western and contemporary sound with influences from Zambia's different traditional groups. Music from other African countries as well as Jamaican and American genres. Since Zambia is a country that is almost entirely covered by a plateau, the climate is consistent, making the temperature generally acceptable for most of the year. The climate is tropical or subtropical depending on altitude, with a hot, humid and raining season from mid-November to March and a dry season from April to mid-November. Zambia offers universal health care for its citizens, but due to limited funding, the public health care provided is severely inadequate. Most expatriates choose to seek medical attention as the good private hospitals in Zambia's big cities. In comparison, they offer higher quality services at a faster rate. Syria alone is a welcoming, friendly West African country with a tropical climate and beautiful beaches. Syria alone's culture is a diverse blend influenced by large amounts of ethnic groups inhabiting the country. The people in Syria alone are friendly, hospitable, and willing to give new expats a warm welcome. Moreover, the locals are expressive and joyful, and religious beliefs and custom are very much present in everyday lives. The international atmosphere of its capital, Freetown, commands one of the world's largest natural arbors and has quite an international community of expatriates. Syria alone, as with most African countries, has a complicated history characterized by colonization and civil war, but its people and the government has done a tremendous job of moving forward and rebuilding the country. Syria alone is bordered on the north and east by Guinea, on the south by Liberia, and on the west by the Atlantic Ocean. The country can be divided into four distinct physical regions. The coastal swamp, the Syria alone peninsula, the interior plains, and the interior plateau and mountain region. Although most of the population is engaged in subsistence agriculture, Syria alone is also a mining center. Its land yields diamonds, gold, and other precious minerals. Since the end of its civil war in the early 2000s, the government of Syria alone has undergone the arduous task of rebuilding the country's physical and social infrastructure while fostering reconciliation. Private capital dominates mining concerns, commerce, and banking. The most outstanding feature of the country's cultural life is music and dancing, as it is an important fabric of normal life. Syria alone's music is a mixture of native, French, British, West Indian, and Creole musical genres. Furthermore, the different communities of the countries have their own style of costume and dance. The climate of Syria alone is tropical and is characterized by the alternation of rainy and dry seasons. Conditions are generally hot and humid. During the rainy season, from May to October, humid air masses from the Atlantic dominate. The dry season, from November to April, is characterized by the Amatan, a hot, dry wind that blows from the Sahara. For those living in Syria alone, healthcare is managed by a mixture of government departments and private companies. In 2010, the government launched a system of free healthcare for pregnant women, new mothers, and children under 5 years old. Apart from that, all healthcare services are charged. Due to this, 
experts living in Sierra Leone are encouraged to obtain comprehensive medical insurance cover before they move to the country. Rwanda is an African nation in the central region of the continent where its citizens are drawn on their heritage to shape a modern culture that celebrates passion, care, and creativity. Beautiful weather prevails, making the country a pleasant spot to call home. Life is affordable, locals are friendly and welcoming, and in spite of its tumultuous history, experts report feeling extremely safe in the country. After the ethnic strife and the civil war in 1994, there has been period of reconstruction and ethnic reconciliation in Rwanda. A new constitution aims at preventing further ethnic strife in the country, and the Rwandan government has implemented sweeping changes and reorganization. Now, multi-party democratic elections are held and multi-ethnic provinces promote power sharing and reduce ethnic conflicts. Today, peace prevails in Rwanda, helping it become one of Africa's most progressive nations. Rwanda is a geographically small country with one of the highest population densities in sub-Saharan Africa. It is often referred to as the land of thousand hills and its landscape is dominated by rainforests, mountains, volcanoes, and lakes. Rwanda's economy was decimated during the genocide. However, the current government has done a commendable job of stimulating the economy, which is now fairly stable and boasts steady growth and low inflation. Tourism too has rebounded and is again the country's leading foreign exchange earner, thanks to the naturally beautiful environment and endangered animals Rwanda is home to. However, the country's economy is overwhelmingly agricultural, with the majority of the workforce engaged in farming, which is highly labor-intensive there with very little use of sophisticated machinery. Much of Rwanda's traditional cultural heritage revolves around dance, praise songs, dynastic poems and traditions, emphasizing their heritage. Regional dances are given pride of place in the country's cultural repertoire. Traditional crafts such as basketry, ceramics, and iron works provides another element of continuity with the past. Festivals are an integral part of the Rwandanese culture and are usually held to celebrate important occasions in the society. Elevation accounts for Rwanda's generally mild temperatures, which average 70 degrees Fahrenheit year-round. There are significant variations, however, between the region of the volcanoes and the northwest, where every rainfalls are accompanied by lower average temperatures and the warmer and drier interior islands. The quality of healthcare in Rwanda remains poor as the country suffers from a shortage of qualified medical professionals. Therefore, experts should ensure that they have comprehensive medical insurance plan in place to receive adequate medical care. Mauritius, the Republic of Mauritius, is an ideal destination featuring idyllic landscapes, fascinating cultural diversity, warm and welcoming population. The island country offers lots of assets to seduce expatriates, including an enticing combination of a robust and growing economy, low taxation, outstanding scenery, and an enviable climate. Situated just two miles from the African coast in the Indian Ocean, the small island of Mauritius is located east of Madagascar. Mauritius has a population of 1.3 million people and covers an area of 2,040 square kilometers. Once dependent on sugar exports, the island has built up a strong outsourcing and financial services sector, as well as an important tourism industry.
Mauritius now boasts one of the Africa's highest per capita incomes. It offers many tax incentives to encourage investors to settle on the island. There is no tax on inheritance and profits. Additionally, dividends and capital income are also tax exempt. Life in Mauritius has much to offer for experts and their family, with good schools, high standards of real estate, and a vast choice of leisure activities ranging from numerous water sports and horseback riding to rugby and golf. The cost of living in Mauritius is cheaper than in some African countries, with a comparable quality of life and crime levels are low. Mauritius is an attractive choice for retirees, as well as experts looking for a career move to this region, since it attracts professional experts wishing to work or settle their business in a pleasant environment with fiscal incentives. During the 19th century, People came from countries such as India, Africa, Madagascar, and China to work in Mauritius. So it has to be expected that a wide range of religious festivals are celebrated in the country today, including the Chinese New Year, the Kavadi Festival, Diwali, and Christmas. Located close to the tropical of Capricorn, Mauritius enjoys a warm climate all year round. Rainfall varies considerably by region, with the east experiencing significantly more rainfall than the west or north. Mauritius is prone to storms caused by cyclones, which are more likely to occur between September and May. Mauritius has a public health care system governed by the Ministry of Health and Quality of Life, although there are many private health institutions as well, offering competent medical facilities and treatments. Located in the southern Africa, Botswana is a peaceful landlocked country offering a promising expert experience. Its recent fast economic growth has attracted lots of foreign investors also seduced by incentive tax system. Botswana is a spot of pristine natural beauty, almost unique to our overpopulated world. As such, moving to Botswana can mean on one hand getting in touch with the world flora and fauna and on the other, experiencing the city life of the capital. Since its independence, Botswana is considered one of the most stable democracies in Africa. With one of the fastest growing economies in the world, Botswana holds plenty of opportunities for expatriates hoping to start a new life in Botswana. It is the continent's longest continuous multi-party democracy. Botswana is relatively free from corruption and has a good human rights record. Botswana is a landlocked country in the southern Africa, sparsely populated with an estimated population of just over 2 million. Broadly speaking, Botswana is flat, with the Kalahari Desert making up roughly 70% of its territory. The Okavango Delta in the northwest of the country draws a wide variety of wildlife when it floods during the months of June to August, making Botswana one of the most popular safari destinations in the whole of Africa. The capital Gaboron is popular among experts and a number of them have settled in that area. Gaboron is the country business and commercial center with many utilities, institutions, including schools and universities. Roughly 10% of the population resides in or around the capital of Gaboron, and the nation is divided into nine districts of varying sizes. There are 15 councils which include the nine district councils and six extra town or city-specific councils. Tswana is the dominant ethnic group, making up 75% of the population, and there are a number of native tribes. Botswana protects some of the Africa's largest areas of wilderness, so it's no wonder that their tightly controlled safari-based tourism is an important source of income. Experts have more of a chance of seeing an African elephant here than anywhere else in the world, plus free roaming big cats, rhinos, antelopes, wild dogs, and various exotic birds. Botswana is the world's largest producer of diamonds, and the trade has transformed it into a middle-income nation. Botswana provides universal healthcare to all citizens through a public healthcare system, but privately run healthcare is also available. Healthcare in Gaboron and other major cities is of reasonable standard with good facilities and qualified staff. And there are also a small number of private clinics offering medical care to a higher standard. The Republic of Namibia is a paradise of natural beauty. Namibians are warm, friendly, and open people who are very proud of their country and with a good reason. 
while still a developing country, Namibia has come a long way and all modern technologies and amenities can be found in its bigger cities and towns, home of two deserts, spectacular coastlines and populous national parks. The country boasts unique wonders. Namibia's name is derived from the Namib Desert, one of the country's most distinctive geographical features. This country in southwestern Africa is bordered to the west by the Atlantic Ocean, to the north by Angola and Zambia, and to the east by Botswana, and to the south and east by South Africa. Experts moving to Namibia are captivated by scenes such as the 75-mile-long Etosha Salt Pan, the massive Fish River Canyon, or the endless Red Sand Dunes. Despite its small size, it's home to a wide range of people from the multitude of ethnic and cultural backgrounds. Namibia is often referred to by experts as Africa for beginners due to its relative safety compared to other African countries and its colonial past. Experts who relocate to Namibia may be surprised by the historical and cultural influences evident in its architecture, work environments, and lifestyles. The country's natural mineral riches and relatively small population have made it an upper-middle income country. Namibia is a diverse melting point of different cultures and tribes, which can especially be seen in cities like Windhoek. The climate and the weather of Namibia can swing between extremes. Although it is classified overall as having an arid climate, the actual weather conditions, temperatures and the amount of rainfall vary considerably throughout the country due to its different geographical regions. Located as it is between two deserts, Namibia has the least amount of rainfall in sub-Saharan Africa and usually has over 300 sunny days per year. Namibia has only one real city of any considerable size, Windhoek, the capital, and that still only has a population of around 325,000. Windhoek is the political, economic, and cultural center of the country. The city offers all the comforts of urban civilization, different restaurants, museums, clubs, and shopping malls. Due to its historical links with Germany, Windhoek has a very European feel. Downtown Windhoek is where Namibia's European-style buildings and food culture uniquely converge into a fascinating and appealing destination. Namibia does have a better healthcare infrastructure than most other countries in Africa, with the majority of the facilities located in the capital Windhoek. Both public and private healthcare systems operate in Namibia, with major differences in the quality of service provided. The Peel of Africa, as Uganda is nicknamed, lies at the heart of the continent. Strandling the equator, Uganda has relatively pleasant weather year-round, albeit humid. Known as a cultural melting point, moving to Uganda will expose you to a world of diverse music, food, social life, arts and crafts. Ugandan people are equally warm, famous to their hospitality and welcoming nature. There are plenty of things to see and do in Uganda, from sampling local cuisine to taking part in exciting outdoor activities. You can also go to horseback riding and experience traditional music and dance. Uganda is a relatively small country, but it's home to some of the most memorable African attractions. Here, you can see the continent's tallest mountain range and encounter some of the world's most endangered animals. This East African country is indeed an appealing destination for an expert project with its spectacular landscapes and natural wonders. Uganda is a culturally diverse country where expatriates can settle and enjoy a stable economy. Job opportunities are available for foreign professionals in NGO, journalism, but also in the oil sector. Uganda may be landlocked, but it doesn't disappoint in terms of impressive diverse landscapes, waterfalls, lakes, and snow-picked mountains. Uganda benefits from having a variety of natural resources such as fertile soils paired with substantial rainfall deposits of gold, copper, and oil. Agriculture continues to be the most important sector where most of the population is employed. Coffee is the country's main commodity and the source of export revenue. New arrivals enjoy an affordable cost of living and will likely find themselves living comfortably in a major urban area. Overall, experts will have a chance to interact with friendly locals while enjoying spectacular landscapes, a mosaic of cultures and exciting wildlife. Uganda lies in the Nile Basin. 
and a substantial portion of Lake Victoria lies in the south of the country. Although it is situated to the equator, Uganda is still more temperate than some of its surrounding areas, mainly thanks to its altitude. Most of the country is situated on a plateau, with a mountainous rim making it more suited to agriculture. This also makes it less prone to tropical diseases than other nations close by. Experts are drawn to work and live in Uganda. Since the discovery of oil, Uganda's economic prospects have improved and its expert labor force is employed in various sectors. Experts will need to invest in a comprehensive health insurance. As treatment in private hospitals can be expensive. Togo is a small country in the west of Africa that is fast becoming a more appealing prospect for experts. Togo acts as a regional commercial and trade center for the West Africa region and economic reform measures have helped to attract more foreign investment as well as experts planning a life in Togo or wanting to play a part in the development of this lovely part of the world. With friendly people and beautiful savannas, it is easy to see why moving to Togo is so attractive for some experts. Thanks to the region's achieved political stability, the country is experiencing a steady economic growth. Togo borders Ghana to the west, with Burkina Faso to the north of the country and Benin to the east. Togo itself is very narrow, stretching down to the Gulf of Guinea, where the capital city Lome can be found. Togo is home to around 7 million people, but most of the nation residents live outside of the main cities, farming their own plots of land to make a modest living. The population of Togo is rising fast and has more than doubled in the last 30 years alone. Togo is gaining popularity among travelers for its pristine natural diversity. The country offers beautiful quiet beaches on the Atlantic coast, lots of hiking and trekking routes, vast savannas and lush green forests. Thanks to the region's achieved political stability, the country is experiencing a steady economic growth. The infrastructure has undergone major improvements that include roads, a new airport, and a port which have significantly simplified travel in the region. Togo's economy still relies heavily on subsistence and commercial agriculture, which employs over 60% of the population. Cocoa, coffee, and cotton are Togo's main exports. Togo's climate is conducive to the nation's heavy reliance on agriculture and contributes to its excellent growing seasons. The Togo mountains run down the center of the country, separating two savanna plains regions that cover much of the nation's land mass. Experts who move to Togo will experience cooler weather from November to March when the dry desert winds from the Hamatan blow south. When the dry desert winds of the Hamatan blow south. Togo itself is very narrow, stretching down to the Gulf of Guinea, where the capital city Lome can be found. Lome has a population of around 750,000, which is multiple times larger than any other Togolese cities. Urban development in Lome and Palime, as well as the growth of the mining sector, provide opportunities for experts considering life in Togo. All healthcare services are free in Togo with the exception of the major clinics in the country's capital city of Lome, where a nominal fee may be charged. Being a land of contrasts and cultural diversity, with modern infrastructures but still preserving authenticity and traditions, Morocco is a popular destination among expatriates. Experts moving to Morocco will be greeted by a colorful land characterized by scenic beauty, bustling marketplaces, and delicious food. Morocco lies at the crossroads of Africa, Europe, and the Middle East, and the elements of these different cultures are visible in everyday life. Though the expert population in Morocco is still relatively small, it is growing steadily. Food is also central to Moroccan culture and the country is a food lover's dream. Its geographical location, its economic growth and incentive fiscal system attract professionals, foreign investors and retirees who settle here to live in a mild climate and enjoy the Moroccan charms. Ultimately, experts moving to Morocco do so with a sense of adventure. Moroccans tend to be open-minded and are interested in learning about new people and other ways of living. Many different cultures, Baba, Arab, Spanish and French, have all left their mark on Morocco through the centuries. Islam, however, is the central tenant of the Moroccan culture and permeates all aspects of everyday life in the country, especially during the holy month of Ramadan. 
While some experts may have their reservations about relocating to an Islamic country, they find that Morocco is far more liberal than most expat destinations in Middle East, while social life in Morocco is centered on the home and family. The Kingdom of Morocco is located at the northwest corner of Africa, separated by the European continent by the Strait of Gibraltar. Most experts living in Morocco will probably reside on the Atlantic coast where they enjoy a Mediterranean climate with mild, wet winters and hot, dry summers. Rabat, the capital of Morocco, was made the administrative capital of the country under the French. The city is a center of the textile industry and is known for the production of carpets, blankets and leather handcrafts. Casablanca is the largest city in Morocco with a population of 3.6 million and is the commercial and industrial heart of Morocco. It is one of the most popular locations in Morocco for experts characterized by a vibrant youth culture, switch beach side suburbs, cosmopolitan lifestyle, and a fantastic creative and business opportunities. Morocco has a two tired medical system. There is a universal public healthcare as well as a private healthcare system. Experts generally avoid the public hospitals and prefer the private clinics where service is more expensive but much better. Located in the Horn of Africa, Ethiopia is an interesting and uncommon expat destination. The country has already seduced expatriates settling here to live and work, but also to indulge in a thrilling experience abroad. Ethiopia is a bright and vibrant country, decorated in rich traditions of various tribes and culture. Experts are drawn to this gem of Africa where salaries are quite good. The standard of living is high and it is a relatively safe country. Moving to Ethiopia has become an exciting prospect for many experts thanks to its moderate climate, expansion in industries and the production of international commodities. In addition, it has a fascinating history, great food and a lively colorful culture to discover. Ethiopia sits landlocked in East Africa. It has a rich history and is widely recognized as the birthplace of modern man 200,000 years ago. Ethiopia is a highly populous nation with around 98 million inhabitants. This makes it the second most inhabited country in Africa and the world's most populated landlocked country. Life in Ethiopia is not without its challenges. But that doesn't mean experts can't make a life and succeed here. Ethiopians are very friendly and education generally meets good standards. So you can settle down with your family and enjoy the beautiful scenery. There are over 80 different languages spoken here, but English is also widely spoken to the delight of most experts. Ethiopia is both multicultural and multi-ethnic. Religion influences both culture and tradition. Although ethnic tensions can erupt in some areas, for the most part, Ethiopia is a country where people of different religions have lived in harmony for centuries. The country also has a rich tradition of both secular and religious music, singing and dancing, and together, these constitute an important part of cultural life. Singing accompanies many agricultural activities as well as religious festivals and ceremonies surrounding lives, milestones such as birth, marriage, and death. Ethiopia enjoys a monsoon climate typical of equatorial countries, but remains cooler than its neighbors at points of high elevation. Temperatures don't vary much between places, but the amount of rainfall varies from the dry season from October to February, the light rainy season of March to May, to the heavy rainy season of June to September. Nonetheless, Ethiopia is very sunny, averaging 7 hours of sunshine a day. Ethiopia's healthcare system is in a state of development, although things are gradually improving. Conditions are better in the cities, where access to doctors and hospitals is easier. Medical services are provided free of charge. However, the standard of public health care is generally lower than in Western countries. We appreciate the fact that you stayed with us until the end. Thank you for spending time with us and don't forget to like this video. Also, make sure you subscribe so that you never miss a video. Bye for now. We will see you tomorrow.